What is up you guys? It's your boy Captain Jack. Welcome back to the channel. We are diving yet again some crystal clear water. We have an absolute sleigh crew with us. The wind's blowing pretty good, but we're gonna get in the water. We're gonna get some action. And at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna give you guys a run through of all the gear I'm using. So go ahead, watch this video, see how I'm diving, all the fish that we're getting. And at the end, I will be at my house and I will give you a full run through of everything in my bag so you guys can see it for yourself. For the crew we got with us, we got our boy Drake, thing, the Anthony. The captain always puts you on all the fish. Yeah, the captain always puts us on the fish. You heard it from the man, Kevin over there. We got my dad running the boat. What else we got up there? We got Dave, we got Jordy, Jody, Jody. I almost called you Jordy. We got our buddy Dave from Killshot. How's it going? I'll leave a, a link to his Instagram page. Let's kill some fish, all right? Yeah, let's kill something. I'll see you guys in the water. All right, you guys, we jump in and it is about 20 feet deep. Now, you're gonna learn a lot of lessons and this is one of them. A big mackerel comes in, I give him the shaft, he came into my flashers and he tore out. And shortly after, a nice uh, mangrove snapper came in and I shot and totally whiffed it. The next fish I shot at with the sling was a strawberry grouper and I figured to myself, you know what, I missed the past couple fish, I'm gonna go ahead and Make sure I take my time, have a good shot. This is a perfect fish to do that. And I whiffed again. So something was off and I was very frustrated and sick of missing. So I hopped in the boat and swapped out weapons. And now the weapon of choice was the pole spear. And the one I'm using is the Headhunter Nomad. And if anybody asks me what pole spear I recommend, I always go with the Nomad. This is the same pole spear I bought back in 2019. And uh, you see me make a drop to the bottom. Nice mutton comes in. I kind of rushed the shot a little bit, shot a good chunk out of him. And luckily, he I could see he wasn't totally spooked, so I sped up, caught up to him, and laced him right in the spine. And it's only about maybe an inch lower than my original shot, probably less than that. And that goes to show the difference between a kill shot and a fish tearing out and losing it is just a centimeter or even less than that. So shortly after that, I gutted that mutton and now you see it, I'm be holding it in my hands. A big yellow jack, well a group of two yellow jack came in. I go ahead and, uh, you know, it was kind of a tough shot with the pole spear. So I just cut a little incision was able to pull the slip tip out, reload my pole spear. I give David my mutton. Here, David, hold this. And the reason I did that was because I think his sling shaft was on the floor and um, he just came up from a dive. So I made a drop on that yellow jack. And here's another thing where it's just a kind of a crazy situation that happened. The I play the fish perfectly, grunt a little bit. He comes right in, gives me a perfect shot and I blasted him right through the gill plate. And what I think happened was I shot him and made such a big hole that the slip tip came out and it didn't engage. But what I did do was I did see that the fish was badly wounded and this is another one that I'm not gonna just allow a fish to be wounded. So I keep him in my peripheral and I am loading my slip tip back up and you can see the fish just on in the background and that's the one thing I really do and I'm kicking this whole time following this fish and one thing I'm really making sure I'm not doing is rushing the dive because the fish is obviously tired out there I haven't seen any sharks around and it's just a matter of time before he might even go belly up but he's kind of slowed down quite a bit right now and I figured okay I've kind of done a little bit of a breathe up I had a little bit of rest at the surface now it's time for me to make a drop and I'm going to take my sweet time on the shot and you'll see exactly what happens landed the perfect stone shot no more struggle brought him up to the surface pretty stoked about that fish especially since I didn't let him go to waste and just senselessly injure fish On this dive, you see Dave lining up his Hawaiian sling, laced a big hogfish. Now, a giant barracuda comes in. I could have sworn this thing was gonna eat it, but you can see what Dave did. If he kind of just let the hogfish go do his own thing, the there's a high chance that barracuda or even a shark could have came in and grabbed him, but you'll see same dive, charged after the fish, making sure that barracuda knew that it was his 
catch and the barracuda just kind of buzzed off and that's what you have to do especially with using these free shaft line slings nice job dude What's that? nice job i thought that i thought that kudo was gonna for sure munch i didn't see the black i know he's way up in there you need a flashlight so now we got tired of diving this shallow stuff we ended up heading into about some 80 to 90 foot bottom and from the surface i knew how deep it was and from the surface i saw a color change and it was a massive hogfish and when those fish are down deep usually especially the males they're really lit up and you'll see as you get closer you'll be able to make out the hogfish and i just booked it down there and you can there you can finally see the fish i book it down straight to the bottom trying to get the fish and the reason i booked it was because i didn't want the fish to get more up current or swim farther away because i saw that he was on the move so i just took a really big breathe up and sent it straight down to the bottom and my other dive buddies luckily were there and came in to back me up you can see there's drake's viewpoint that was a stud hog and i just headed straight to the surface and that's a great thing he did was kind of grab the spear help me out and get me up to the surface there's a big black down there piece of a dive dog Ooh. I'm going to show you guys the full drop on this last dive I make, and it is quite an epic one. So now, we started chumming just a little bit, and we were drifting pretty quickly, but I had some divers up above me, and now whenever I'm diving like this, I'm not just blind dropping. I saw a mutton kind of come in and like off in the distance, like a good-sized mutton, and uh, so I just make sure I descend, and I just go straight to the bottom on this drop, and this is a decently timed drop. Um, but I go down, I lay flat, I toss up sand, and I that kind of pulls in stuff from off in the distance, and I'm really aiming for that mutt. Uh, I kind of think I just saw him, just a glimpse of him. I'm not really kind of showing him a ton of attention. I'm grunting, I'm scratching, kind of just sitting down there. You can see the mutton off in the distance, and he ultimately doesn't really want to have anything to do with me but because I was down there for a long time I was being really patient I threw up the sand I am still I still have a little bit of bottom time left and this was kind of like a Hail Mary to get that mutton all the way in but all this commotion brought in a stud hogfish and you know it's big when it has a pilot fish with him I line up and absolutely laser stone this fish that is such a good drop such a good fish and you saw, saw how I was really patient at the bottom, and being patient honestly pays off. Um, I get to the surface, super stoked about this fish. My buddy divers are right there because they know I was down there for a long dive, and uh, that's really what you want to have happen on a dive. Amped up that I got this fish. Kill shot live. At this point, no grouper have been shot. So none of the divers have made a drop on any. We really haven't seen a whole lot. But this is Drake's viewpoint, and uh, he has a GoPro on his head as well. And you see him dropping. He's using the pole spear. You see this big black kind of chilling on the bottom. And because we're a little deeper, these grouper are a little kind of not as smart as the shallower ones. He comes in close enough, lands a nice tail shot, and the thing just absolutely destroyed his injector rod. Um, but having these belt reels diving this deep stuff there's not a whole lot of giant caves they can rock up in so he kind of gave him some slack shot up to the surface and i was at the surface about to make a drop and this is my gopro you can see me make a drop i just wanted to make sure we secured the fish because there was kind of it's kind of a suspect shot i wasn't too sure better to be safe than sorry took my time landed a nice stone shot in the fish lights out Nice, dude. Got one. Fuck yeah. Nice. I brained him with my spear. Here goes Drake again, making a nice drop on the deeper stuff. I'm pretty sure he's in pursuit of this mutton. Um, but it ended up leading, oh no, actually it's not a mutton, it's a, a white margate. Uh, but it led him to this kind of a big rock cave area, and you just see these hogs all over it. He picks the biggest one, 
makes a good shot on him and lands the fish. And, but if you look at that cave beyond it to the right, there ends up being a giant yellowfin grouper in that hole. And uh, Dave ends up shooting that grouper later. But you can see Drake made a really good shot. You can see Dave right there looking over the edge. And I'm at the surface making sure I'm watching all these guys, making sure that everything's going good. And uh, Drake doesn't struggle at all with this fish. Pulls him right up, made a good shot. And uh, shortly after, I see David making a uh, making a drop on that grouper, and I start going to back him up. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now David was pretty stoked on this yellow fin. Um, he didn't wear a GoPro, but this is his personal best yellow fin grouper, so he was pretty stoked on it. Solid fish to end the trip. Chill in the water, so nice. Uh, Woo. Got Good stuff. Baby. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. oh, gotta catch up to the boat. So nice to get in the water. Oh, dude. Oh, epic day. Pop. Let me show you what we're working with here. Look at that. Can't see it all because uh, everything's pretty much buried. And then we got another hatch with some of the big boys in there. And uh, I'm stoked I was able to get basically all of my fish on video and uh, some deep dives. That's when we really got into the good fish. David got that last yellow fin and I got a couple of hogs, uh, one for the ceviche bowl and one to take home. So I'm pretty stoked for that. But enough talking, I wanna show you guys the kind of gear that I'm rocking with. And uh, I'm really excited for you guys to kind of maybe take some tips and tricks. Stay tuned, I'll see you guys back in my house when we're going through my gear bag. All right, everybody, so we're back at my place and I'm gonna give you a run through of all the gear that I brought to the Bahamas, at least on this trip. Now, depending on the trip, depending how long and if it's overnight and whatnot, will depend on any extra things that I would bring. Uh, but if I went on a day trip, something like that, I'm gonna run through everything I have and I try to keep it as minimal as possible and as organized as possible, just so I don't leave anything behind or forget anything, something like that. Uh, and this is what I got right here. This is all my gear. That's the bag. All of this stuff was in that bag. And then this is separate. And then my dry box is separate as well. Now, if you're not doing videos like me, you probably won't need a dry box. You probably use a dry bag, but I'm going to go from the left to the right here and I'm going to run you through everything. So the first thing is this sweet mesh bag. I love this thing. I got it from Spear America. I will leave a link to their website down below and you can find this bag. Uh, the best thing about it is it fits my big fins. So moving down the line, uh, and also the great thing, you can dunk it in water with all your gear in a pool or in a big tub, and then you can just dump all your gear out after that and let everything dry. So that's a nice, easy way to clean things. And also it has backpack straps. And I think that's huge because uh, sometimes you just need the extra hands to carry your gear around. Um, so that's one thing I really like about that bag. And it has a little extra pocket that I throw some things in like injector rods, um, flashlights, soap, all that stuff. So very organized and I love that. It's like a catch-all bag. You can throw everything in there. So moving on. I have a GoPro mouthpiece, a mouthpiece, another extra GoPro. And now I say this is something that you guys might not take with you um, because not everybody's filming like I am. I have the GoPro, I have the Omer Alien mask with the GoPro mount. This thing's pretty beat up. It's actually, it's, it's time for a new one. Um, I have the GoPro case that goes on the mask. I only have one of those. Sometimes I bring extra. Um, and then I also bring with me an extra GoPro mask and snorkel because without that, I mean, I can, I can spear with no fins. I can spear with no wetsuit, no weight belt, all that stuff. But if you forget a mask, you're kind of screwed and a snorkel, you're kind of screwed. So always bring an extra one of that. It doesn't take up much extra space. Uh, and like I said, keep it simple. Little dive mask, little snorkel, keep everything simple. Got the shampoo, baby shampoo. Usually I make up a little concoction using a water bottle. I'll spray some of this, have some water, and I'll just use that throughout the day. Um, a lot of people ask me what the vest is that I'm wearing, and that is this. It's an FRV, which is a free dive recovery vest, and it has an actuator. Basically, if you blacked out, uh, I have parameters set on this, or if I hit the surface and then go back under immediately, like I did a shallow water blackout at the surface, 
it will inflate and send me up to the surface no matter what. Um, also, it has a self-inflating button. If I'm in trouble, I can hit this, I think like seven times. It's on my arm. And then also there's a red pull strap. It'll send me to the surface. Always good to have, even if you get abandoned in the ocean and I have this on, it's like an extra life jacket. So that's one thing. I always dive with it. Uh, kind of expensive, but it's worth your life. And they run about $1,000. And I bought this one a long, long time ago. The guy doesn't make it anymore. Just research it free dive recovery vest, you might be able to find something. So moving down the line is going to be, I always bring my flashers set up just in case uh, we want to dive some deep stuff, some pelagic stuff. Um, I have my 1.5 mil wetsuit. Usually I don't need more than that, especially in the summertime, it gets pretty hot. I have my dive light and it's just a random dive light I got off Amazon. And then the wrist strap, you can get it off Amazon or I got mine off Mako Spear Gun. Also got my weight belt. And with my weight belt, I'll tell you, if you could put a belt reel on your weight belt, that's great. And also a knife on your weight belt, that's clutch as well, because it's one less extra thing you have to bring with you and worry about and forget. And then I also have a carabiner that uses, it's kind of like a catch off, I get a fish, I can hook this through their gills, kind of use it as a stringer. My dive fins, I'm telling you, these Moanas are the best. I love them. Uh, I've had them for about five years now and I beat them up. I dive at least once a week and they, I treat them like they were a plastic pair of fins and they're great. And the reason they're so good is because the, it's such thick, you can almost even see, I don't know if you, yeah, you can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it, but they're made in sections and it's thicker near the cert, the base of it where there's a lot of pressure if you stand on them um, and then it gets thinner towards the end so you get performance but you get the durability in the spots that it matters um, and i love these things i don't wear booties um because it's one less thing i have to worry about and forget and remember uh, so i ended up one day trying without booties and i didn't need them anymore so if i were you i could Try it. Maybe uh, maybe you'll build up a tolerance and not need booties. One less thing to worry about. Got the headhunter gloves. These things are awesome. Definitely need gloves in the Bahamas when shooting a pull spear. And now I have this little dry case. I have my pull spear first aid kit in case I um, pop a rubber band or something like that. I have these little flashers. I have extra slip tips in here. And then I also normally have extra batteries for the recovery vest. Uh, I don't have them in here, but normally I would have those. Um, moving on, I have my whole spear set up here. I have my homemade spear, and then I also have a predator pole spear that breaks down into two pieces. And then I have my nomad right here that breaks down into three pieces. And I have them all bungee strapped together with this um, kind of zip tie deal set up. So that's how I keep everything organized. It's just one big thing I carry with me. I love it. Trying to stay organized is the key, especially heading on those trips over there. But now moving on to this dry bag, well dry box. Uh, I love having it because it's so rigid and stiff and I just leave it on the deck of the boat and um, it's not clear plastic. So nothing really gets too hot in here. Uh, I have my little GoPro grip thing that I leave on the boat, usually with an extra GoPro. I have my mask GoPro, and then I also have the boat GoPro. So I only rock two GoPros, um, and if anybody brings extra, that's great. It uh, adds to the quality of the video. Now, uh, I also have the inReach, Garmin inReach. This thing has saved me plenty of times. Oop, need to shut it off. Uh, it's adds, it basically doubles as a GPS system, uh, a satellite phone, but you can send text through it. And then it also has an EPIRB SOS button, um, essential when you're crossing oceans. I uh, got my passport and then all the other documents that I need to cross. Got some bug spray, not bug spray. Got some, uh, basically my whole body is covered with the wetsuit or leggings. So usually I just have something for my face for sunscreen. And then I have batteries in here, drone controller here, and drone right here, everything fits nicely in, in the bag. I have an extra dive light. And then I have this, which is a sun, a sunglasses case with all extra GoPro accessories, extra SD cards, extra batteries, all that good stuff. And that is my whole run through of 
my dye stuff that I take on trips like this. God, it is hot. If you haven't been to Florida in the summer heat, it is brutal. All right, you guys, there you have it. All of my gear, I had to stop recording because the camera actually overheated during the day. So that goes to show how hot is it, how hot it is here. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. If you're new, consider subscribing. Like always, I'll see you guys next week for another adventure. Later.